Welcome to the Black Cast. As always, I am Christian Blatt, and I'm so happy that joining me now, actor, comedian, writer, musician, Tommy Davidson, the last of those hyphenates we'll uh, spend some time talking about today, thetommydavidson.com. That's your spot for everything. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today, Tommy. I'm here. I'm loving it. Just another opportunity to live the life of an entertainer. I always exactly. wanted it. Here it is, you know. <laughs> Well, uh, I can't wait to uh, talk to you ab about uh, the music, but uh, before we jump into that, I wanted to talk about just sort of reading through your bio, uh, just talking about how, you know, you moved around a little bit. You were uh, abandoned at the age of 18 months and you were adopted by a, a white couple and you moved around a little and then you moved right into Washington, D.C. Uh, yes. in 1968 during the time of the riots sparked by the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So what, yeah, so that's a big, that's a, that's a big way to all of a sudden learn about race for the first time. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, uh, it was one hell of an introduction, man. You know, I didn't know I was black. Right. Or what you call black. Right. You know? No, no. But I mean, that's what, yeah, exactly. The, you, had you, no you had white parents and uh, you, you learn pretty quickly. Talk mm -hmm. about uh, you. So your actual comedy career does start in the D.C. area, right? Before you yeah. uh, move out. So talk a little bit about what that was like. I mean, I, I interned in Washington, D.C. one summer. It was in the late 90s. And uh, what I learned then was that uh, the, the town kind of shut down during the week a lot earlier than I was used to growing up in New York. But uh, talk about getting started in comedy and some of the people out there who maybe you crossed paths with. Well, it started um, from the first time I did an open mic. Now, I wasn't I was challenged to do comedy at a strip club that a friend of mine worked at. So I wasn't in the market to be a stand up comic. But he thought I was funny. He set it up. I finally went. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, I don't care what you do, just say something in the mic. And it worked from the very start. It was like it was already there, you know? So I went from there to the fastest rise you can imagine. It was only a year after that, I was in Hollywood. Oh, wow. And that started by doing open mics because what I did was I did that show for a while. And then I started doing contests. And finally, somebody said, you got to go to a comedy club. I finally went went to Garvin's in Washington, D.C., famous Garvin's, and I go to do open mic, and that's the night I met Dave Chappelle and Martin. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, they, they do open mic, too. Right, exactly. And uh, mm -hmm. when you uh, when you moved to L.A., you end up uh, living in the same building as Martin. I didn't realize that uh, you'd known him before oh, that. Was yeah. So getting to, so knowing Martin and I know that, uh, just reading in the notes, I know that, uh, you're still close with Martin. You guys still do shows sometimes. And uh, mm -hmm. so that's gotta be great to have somebody like that, you know, sort of going through it with you, you know, sort of, uh, on, on the way up. And at what point does in living color come on your, uh, radar? Obviously you're, you're doing stand up. Had you yeah. done much acting or, uh, anything on television before that? Hadn't done any of that. And it was just like stand up, you know, once the camera came on. Well, not the first time, <laughs> the right. camera came on. but once I got in front of the camera in general, the rest just started happening was already there. So it was three years after I hit the ground in L.A. that In Living Color happened. Wow. And it was a very, very involved, long, hard three years, man. Not like I was talking about something else, but it was—it was just—it was, was like—it was like everything came down to in living color. It, my whole life led to that show, right? Firstly, that's the reason why I called, why I called my book, you know, "Living in Color," because it was so coincidental that I had this this identity crisis as a kid, and I end up on this show called "In Living Color." Yeah. And uh, obviously, I, I remember I was in like junior high when that premiered. And I remember what a big deal that that show was. And just to think about the cast, you know, I don't want to sell anybody short, but it's it's you, Damon Wayans, other Wayans, David mm -hmm. Allen Greer and, of course, Jamie Foxx, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
and just have them all on one show. It's one of those, you know, it's like when the first time when I saw a cast photo, the original uh, SNL cast, I'm like, oh, everybody from my favorite movies used to be on a show together. Okay, I get it, <laughs> you know. So uh, that's uh, that had to be a, a great experience in that sense. And I know that, uh, you know, just reading that uh, you had already done a lot of uh, impressions, but that uh, apparently at one point you didn't actually know what they were. You just kind of did voices in your act, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was easy. It, you know, it was easy in that sense because once I found out that I can just do singers and stuff that I already knew, uh, I started flying through stand-up because I did that anyway. You know, I, I do Al Jarreau at home when I was a little kid. My mother would say, shut that up. <laughs> and, you know? and just to interject for a moment, you know, Al Jarreau, there, there might not be a lot of call for that voice right now. But I just read over the weekend that Moonlighting is going to be uh, streaming for the first time. Uh, it'll be on Hulu. So uh, Al Jarreau is going to be back in people's lives. So. Come fly by night. <laughs> Who won't fly by day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I I wasn't gonna ask you to do that, but I'm so glad you did. Thank you. <laughs> I got so, a McDonald's commercial is, the, is my favorite. So I've got a taste for McDonald's right on the tip of my tongue. I'm a I've got a taste for McDonald's. I've got to have me some. Ooh, give me McDLT. Oh, I love the taste of it. Love some golden fries. Love an ice cream Sunday. Nothing else can satisfy. I've got a tease. For the please. <laughs> well, for our uh, our audio audience, uh, I, I'm going to play some of your music, which we'll talk about in a moment. But now I gotta I gotta sneak that Al Jarreau McDonald's commercial into the audio version. You don't want to share anything on YouTube. Uh, they they are very watchful there. But you know, you just gave a perfect example of how music was a part of your act. So, at yeah. what point do you get the idea of like, well, maybe I'll just do music, you know, for for serious for lack of a better word, you know, to just actually just do it straight, not for comedy. It, it is, um, it's fulfilling. It's what I did first. It's my first love in entertainment scene. And I wanted to be a big music star when I grow up. I wanted to be a big singer, you know, and, and that's where my, my, my stars were sparkling. That's what I wanted. Now I'd already taken Academy Awards in my backyard and a little, there was a little stage in my backyard. So I'd already, already lived my, my actor's life as a kid. You know, I knew, I knew who I was. I, uh, uh, Ernest Borg nine and, 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 uh, I did this all my, my, my heroes, you know, but it was music. It was music. And I did say Ernest Borg nine, by the way, he was in Willard. Yeah. He was in, you know, you know, the uh, uh, Poseidon adventure. I mean, I, I know, you know, I, I was taking my, my Oscar. I mean, I was taking my Oscar when I was a kid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I can tell you, Papillon, uh, Steve McQueen won for Papillon. I mean, I can tell you, uh, uh, the, the, the Planet of the Apes was, the, and um, um, 2001 were the first movies that I saw in a drive through So, I mean. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's. Uh... I was ready for all of that, but it was music. Yeah. That always, you know, you know, that was it. Well. Let's uh, take a moment and talk about uh, each of the songs that I assume are available wherever you find music, but the Tommy Davidson.com. That's the spot to go to uh, find it. Uh, so you have a song called uh, sweet reunion, which that features uh, Dave cause who uh, I, I remembered a couple things about him and I, I double checked to make sure I was right. He's sort of like on both ends of the late night talk show spectrum for the eighties, you know, because he was a, a, you know, somewhat recurring on the coolest show in the eighties, which was Arsenio and then was in the house band for a much less cool show, the Pat Sajak show, but right. he's had right. a much huger career beyond that. But I just thought that was like, what an interesting footnote to be in the house band for the Pat Sajak show, you know? Right, 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 right. Or to not mention, but anyway. Um... <laughs> yeah, well, if I was talking to him, I'd kind of feel it out. You know, I, I, would, I would first mention Richard Marks because, you know, he was a he was a huge, you know, multi-platinum seller. But, you know, if, if he was like, yeah, I don't really care much about late night TV. I'm like, all right, duly noted. But obviously he's got so much more on top of that, you know. Uh, yeah, so yeah. He, talk about a, how you got the idea of like collaborating with him on the song Sweet Reunion. I, I, um. I came in contact with Dave because I was hired on his uh, uh, cruise, the Dave Cos cruise. And I was hired as a comedian. Uh, I hadn't met him. When I did meet him, I, I was always a big fan of his. I did 
a saxophone riff from one of his one of my favorite saxophone riffs, riffs from his one of his songs that I loved. And he stood there and he was mesmerized. He said, that's exactly what I did <laughs> in the song. He said, you got some musical stuff going. He didn't know how, how deep I went with that, but he also aided in me going forward. I did that cruise and he watched me and he says, man, I really think you should look into this music thing. And I did. I found one of my, I, I, I took one of my favorite songs that I've been wanting to make into a, to, to my own version since it was out in the 80s. And it happened to be a song by Kenny Loggins, who's one of my favorite Sweet Reunion. And once I was done the track, I called Dave and I said, hey, um, would you listen to the track for me? I really would like you to, um, to do it, you know, to let me feature you on this. And he called me right back and said, I'm in. I love it. We went in the studio. He drove all the way across town. Uh, he's got one of these fangled electric cars. Saves him <laughs> a lot of money. Saves him yeah. a lot of money. And that's kind of a Hebrew trade, like to save money. So so he 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 said yes, yes, yes. And that's where it started. Because I had always been musically inclined to the to the T. My ears, um, the best compliment I ever got was from Larry Dunn of Earth Wind and Fire. He calls me elephant ears. He says the stuff that you can hear, you know, and the friends of mine in the business, Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, Patti LaBelle, uh, it just, it just, Lou Rawls, God bless him, Al Jarreau, just all of the people that have influenced me over the years are in me. And it started there and it fit, it was appropriate. My mom was white um, and I'm not. <laughs> and Sweet Reunion to me was my mom coming back into my life through my new daughter, Chiana. So it all of a sudden had this purpose too. So the song was perfect. I love Kenny to death and it all worked out. And it's all because uh, Dave Koss said yes and it legitimized me. Well, I think that, uh, you know, Kenny Loggins, obviously, uh, you know, a lot of people will think of the the big movie soundtrack songs that, you know, huge songs for him. But uh, I'm right. had, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Danger Zone, you know, there's so many. But uh, in, in addition to those, he's, he's got he's got beautiful songs like the one you're talking about. And uh, when uh, my wife and I got married, her uh, first dance, you know, the father daughter dance song was a song he has called celebrate me home, which I had to admit oh, I've I heard that, that song. It's a beautiful song. And I was like, Oh, I thought the, you know, your mama don't dance and uh, danger zone. Right, you know? right. But uh, yeah, no, he's great. And what a, what a great choice. Uh, before we run out of time, I want to talk about uh, the other songs. Let's talk about kid zero. Uh, you sure. have a couple of collaborators on that, uh, and I'm going to do my best to say Chieli Minucci's name, and I hope okay. I'm right. But yeah. uh, Chieli has worked with, I saw the list, and it was like Mark Anthony to the Backstreet Boys, to Roberta Flack, to Jewel, to Jayla, to Jessica Simpson. So it's like everybody. And uh, I was like, man, the uh, wh why there's no book about uh, those stories. Maybe that's why they get to keep working with everybody, because they don't write yeah. a book, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, I got lucky again, or fortunate. Kelly is one of my favorite guitarists, and I don't know him, um, but he's got a couple of songs that are near and so dear to me. So when I came across Kid Zero, um, I wanted to do this song with a guitarist and a bassist, of course. Or Harvey Mason wrote the song. And I called him. And he said, yes. He said, I'd love to. And I, I, I Matched him, I paired him with Julian Vaughn, who's one of our, uh, probably one of our uh, recent geniuses in music and, 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 and specifically smooth jazz. Kind of stepped in the, sh stepped in the uh, shoes of, of Stanley Clark, another great Nathan Easton, and, and really enhanced it for today, you know? I think it was mostly uh, uh, influenced by um, the basketball player. I, I, I forget his name, but it, Great hits, uh, NBA player, Olympic athlete, gone. Uh, Raymond Tinsdale, and, and, and he's a strong influence for Julian. And I got them together on Kid Zero, and guess what happened? It did really, really well. It got on watercolors, 
which is something I really wanted bad because I knew that that would open people's ears to me and they could really hear my stuff. And Kid Zero did really, really well for me in that sense. I won't forget I Know because I Know was before that. Yeah. And I Know is the one that I did with Richard Elliott. Can't leave him out. Great uh, a player from way back, Tower Power. I mean, just been around. It was the same story. He said he met me at a Cuban restaurant. I was nice to him. So I said, well, if he thinks that, maybe he'll do my song. I called him. He said, I'll do it. And he was the difference in the whole song. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, obviously so much of it can be stuff like, you know, those moments of, uh, oh, I, this is, uh, you know, I knew this person, I reached out to them. But yeah, sometimes you just run into somebody and uh, it, it turns into a, a great collaboration. So looking forward, uh, obviously there's uh, still uh, no shortage of uh, comedy shows, but uh, are you looking at uh, doing actual a, a tour or maybe some shows here and there of uh, just music or maybe a hybrid of both or uh, is it all still in the works? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to harvest a seed like it's, like it's harvest did. I'm, I'm going to just plant this music, you know, and nurture it, give it sunlight, water, all the things you need, pull the weeds out until it grows, you know, and, it, and once it grows, then I'll go out there and start to perform it. In the meantime, I'm going to be putting all the love into the seed, yeah. which is going to you know, putting all the all the best music that I can out there in volumes. So this is is my first album, and more to come. But we're going one song at a time, and doing the work that it takes to be a live performer. I got the first part, which is yeah. just being a live performer. But now taking that and blending that with the performer in comedy with a performer in music. And what there is, is is there's a unique dialogue that's gonna take place in my show that you couldn't get from other musicians or you couldn't get from other comedians. It's just my turn to do what I do. I don't know what that is yet, but it's gonna be good. <laughs> 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 it's gonna be good. That's that's really the key. Well, before I let you go, uh, I wanted to give you a moment to uh, take a second to talk about uh, some of the work that you and your wife do as part of your apparel company. Uh, something uh, called Ties That Binds, where you provide business wear to uh, people that you know maybe don't have the the formal outfit to go out on uh, job interviews. I thought it was a great idea, and I wanted to make sure we uh, were able to get that in at the end. Yeah, you know that th that's something that we've been able to do. You go to sh sh shop. Uh, uh, tongue in cheek and you get the whole picture you get the stuff that we've been able to do the apparel it's only 10 to 20 dollars we, we i always if i uh, if i go into retail i always wanted to have affordable stuff but with the quality i sound like a salesman now but it's true <laughs> <laughs> you know so we got some beautiful stuff and it's it's, it's really um one of those things that I'm so grateful for because here's another one. The list is the top cartoon in the world on Disney Plus was the Proud Family. Then the next one is the music. Then the next one is, you know, my television work and more to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the Tommy Davidson, that again, that uh, the Tommy Davidson.com. Obviously, you are the Tommy Davidson, but I'm plugging the website, the mm -hmm. Tommy Davidson.com. Mm -hmm. That's where you find uh, links to the songs that we talked about and uh, mm -hmm. everything else. Tommy, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. I enjoyed listening to the music and uh, it was great to get the chance to talk to you today. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me, too, man. Spread the gospel. Absolutely. Uh, we'll be spreading it. And as I said, the audio audience is going to get to hear a little bit uh, on the way out. And an Algero McDonald's commercial. I uh, think you're gonna. Okay, thank you, thank you. Get that out there for me. All right. <laughs> all right. Thanks again, Tommy. All right. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Right.